The reason I think that it's helpful to read historical texts, and in particular medieval texts about questions of religion for a philosopher, is that a philosopher is primarily interested in trying to understand the world around us, phenomena, certain problems that face us, questions that only philosophers somehow manage to ask about the world. And so we're, primi we're primarily trying to answer questions for ourselves. And, to, and by answering questions, I mean that we're trying, we're not always as interested in the conclusion we reach, but we're interested in what sorts of arguments we can give for the conclusion, and to see whether or not a certain belief is justified, whether we can give good reasons for certain claims about religion. Concerning the topic, well, not just the concept of religion, it, has, it concerns also questions about knowledge, questions about the physical world, um, questions in metaphysics about the nature of substances, um, time, um, all sorts of questions. Um, the medieval authors often, precisely because they are in many ways foreign and alien to assumptions that we hold nowadays, offer us often resources that can be extremely illuminating, that can throw fresh foreign light onto subjects which we've been thinking about. So I employ the medieval authors, let's say like Maimonides, to think about questions that I have, problems that I see within Judaism, because, I th because one, he, throws a, he comes from a completely different context than the modern context, and two, because I think he's one of the, in my mind, together with David Hume, one of the two thinkers who struggled with questions about religion with the greatest depth and the greatest integrity in the history of philosophy. So I look to these medieval authors as if we're not, I'm not interested in them so much, I'm not interested in them historically, simply as historical figures or simply in texts, although much of the challenge is often trying to figure out what they're saying from the text. But I look to them primarily for ideas for suggestions for how to think about these problems. And I find them a very, very rich resource. And um, Maimonides' own skepticism has been, what can I say, an inspiration to me, all right, in thinking about what I can know and what I can't know about God.